In this video, we will be making this house scene, so you will learn the basic stuff to make the pixel art in Krita. And if you never used Krita before, you should watch the previous video where I cover the basics using Krita for pixel art. You can find the link in the description. But if you already used Krita, then you can just follow along. You can see the shortcuts I use in the left bottom of the screen. There isn't anything too advanced in this video, so you should be able to follow along pretty easily. So let's begin. You can use this predefined image size called Pixel, which is very good starting point. So let's begin to paint the house. First make a new painting layer. Choose black color and your one pixel brush and the rectangle tool. Let's start with the outline. The rectangle tool is really good for making the base for the house. And let's make the ground with the line tool. Holding shift you can make straight lines. You can use this to make the base of the roof. And use the horizontal mirror tool to paint the sides of the roof. And let's clean the details with the eraser tool. Paint the chimney. Let's paint the window and the door with the rectangle tool. And here add some details to the door. and copy pasting so you don't have to repeat the process. This will create new layers so with Ctrl E you can merge the layers below. And with the line tool we can add some details to the window. You can adjust these by selecting them with the selection tool and then use the transform tool to move them down or up. And I really like the eraser tool to clean up the lines. I think it's a little bit too big, so let's resize it. And let's make the window frame with the rectangle tool. And let's try to hit the correct spot. And if you miss, just undo and try again. Let's add the base using the line tool again. The rectangle selection tool and the transform tool are really good for adjusting the pixels. Let's resize the roof slightly. And here I'm just using the transform tool and the selection tool and then erasing some details away. In this part I'm pretty much using the line tool, the brush tool and the rectangle tool and the eraser to erase extra details. Let's make a platform, so there's a place to fish or something. The rectangle painting tool is quite handy to make the legs. And let's get the outline of the tree. Holding shift with the brush tool you can resize the size of the brush slightly bigger. I think it's easier to make the profile. And you can try to make it as organic or fluffy as possible. So here's a one good tip if you resize the brush and then you want to get it back to the original size is there is a shortcut that I recommend you to set which is called reload original preset. I did set it to the control one but if you have better option please use whatever you want. So now you can start cleaning the outline of the tree with the default one pixel brush. While erasing I'm trying to search some details so it feels like sculpting or carving out the details. We are trying to get the clean outline for later to add the flat colors with the fill tool. And here it really helps to resize the brush with the shift and click and then resetting to the back to the one pixel brush with the shortcut and then going just back and forth. It's always a good idea to rename your layers correctly. But if you are like me, you will always forget it and just paint and then make a mess. 
Let's make some clouds for the background. Here the process is the same as with the tree. Just make it organic, round, sketching, some cloud shapes and then just start cleaning the outline and add some new part. Let's add some more details here. Some wooden sign I think would be good here. Let's add logs, because we have a chimney, right? So we need something to warm the house, I suppose. And here the process is pretty much the same as previously, just adding new details, items and such, and adjusting everything and cleaning the details. So for the coloring part, add new painting layer below the line art layer, and remember to rename the layer as color, if you feel like it. And then you can use the paint bucket tool to start filling areas. And if you have some issues that it's not behaving like you would like, always check the tool options docker and you will find the problem usually in there. So this option set it so that it takes the areas from the line art also not only from the empty layer. So I can start filling correctly the areas with color. So now we can just start filling the areas picking colors and filling with the bucket tool. So this part is very straightforward. Just picking colors and filling the empty areas with flat colors. And then we can start adding shadows with some slightly darker color than the original. And here I'm thinking the area or the outline shape and then fill it with the shadow color. Here I'm adding some more detail with the shadow. Just thinking where the light would hit and the shadows. And then highlights with some brighter color. Just adding some details here, highlights and shadows. The process is pretty much the same all through the image. Just adding some random details everywhere. For the wall I just used brighter color with the line tool and then copy paste it and then finally merge it to the same layer. And then box select the part of the door and clear out the lines front of the door and the window. Let's add some color variation to the wall. Some highlights for the window. I really don't have any tips or tricks in here, just add some details with different color and experiment. For the roof, just use the line tool and paint the highlights. Maybe some shadow for the chimney and some more highlights. For the clouds I just filled with the basic color and started to add some details. I'm not really good at drawing clouds. For the background I choose the background layer. Good shortcut is air and click the color of the background and it will automatically choose the correct layer. And fill it with light blue. I adjusted the blue slightly less strong so it doesn't hurt your eyes. Easy way to recolor the outline is to select the line art layer with control clicking it and it selects only everything that is in that layer and control H hides the selection. And now we can recolor some of the outline to be more brighter. So you can add some variation to the outline. So here I'm painting 
on the line art layer with the selection still active and changing the colors of only the line art itself. And by the way, for the selection to deselect everything, there is a shortcut which is Ctrl Shift A and it's really handy shortcut to remember. And for the background, again I choose the background layer and add some sky horizon in there. A little bit detail brush to add some detail. I really like to add some age to the house, add some grass growing in there and maybe moss and maybe some broken stuff like the roof so it adds a little bit character to the painting and maybe tells slightly some story or something. And you can let your imagination to flow in here. And for the water, I had everything merged together except the background and I copy the house and then flip it with the transform tool, Ctrl T and you have the flip option at the tool, options, darker and then set the layer below, remove some extra details and move it to the correct position fix some small parts by painting on the layer above it You can make waves, box selecting some areas and move this with the arrow keys, some of these selections slightly left with the arrow, maybe one pixel and then another selection slightly right and you get this nice ripple effect and they make water slightly darker I made a new layer above the water reflection box select the area I want to have the dark water and just paint it over with the darker blue color and then change the layer style to multiply and tweak a little bit the opacity and now it's starting to look a little bit like a water and let's delete the things we don't want and then let's add some highlights to the water using new layer up above everything and paint with the lighter blue color Let's crop the image and then you can fill out the empty spaces with the previous colors. So here I'm going to add more water and it's easier to change the layer back to normal and put the opacity so you can color pick the correct color and just fill the empty spaces. Let's tweak a little bit the multiply layer, erasing some of the dark color. I think the clouds were too dark, so I selected and then adjust the colors by pressing Ctrl U. And also adjusting the water multiply layer opacity to get it slightly less dark. And then painting some more things to the background. Here I'm tweaking the image overall. Zooming out is a good way to see where more things to add or more things to remove. Here I had painted on the wrong layer, so I decided to clean all of the pixels and then paint them in the correct layer. And then add some backgrounds, the horizon with different color.
and so the water I decided to make it more more lighter with the gradient tool choosing almost white color and I made it in its own layer so it's easier to adjust the opacity and again with the control U you can adjust the colors slightly more And finally adding some details pretty much everywhere to adding some final touch to the scenery. And when you are finished you can rescale the image bigger by going image scale image to new size. Check that you have the filter as nearest neighbor and change the scaling option from pixel to percentage. Usually something like five times bigger is pretty good for pixel art if you want to save it online. So that should avoid the blurry image when you upload it somewhere. And finally save it as PNG. Usually the default options are pretty good. And there you go, the house scenery with the lake. So I hope you learned something today. And like always, if you have some requests or feedback, please let me know. Until next time, cheers.